You're listening to a free audio download from Venue Cymru's International Concert Series. Welcome to the May edition of pre-concert interviews from Venue Cymru. This month, the Bolshoi Symphony Orchestra visited Venue Cymru with a programme dedicated to the music of Tchaikovsky. In order to further explore the music, we interviewed three guests. Dr. Chris Collins, who is a lecturer of music at Bangor University with a particular interest in Russian music. We were also joined by Alexander Kalashkov, who is the leader of the Bolshoi Symphony Orchestra, as well as their principal cellist, Boris Lifanovsky. For our first question, we asked, what is the historical context surrounding Eugene Onyegin and the Nutcracker? Well, Eugene Onyegin is, is really the first successful um, opera of Tchaikovsky. Though there are several. It's the most successful still to this day, but I mean, it's quite an early work in a sense. 1877, 78, I think. Um, period of great difficulty in Tchaikovsky's life. This is the period when he entered into a marriage um, unwillingly because he seemed to think that that would be the best. Uh, way to to fight against homosexual yearnings that he had um, and there's there's a whole story there that connects that in with Eugene Onyegin as a choice of, of text because the story I mean the first act of Eugene Onyegin which is of course about um, a young woman falling in love with uh, a young man and writing a letter to him to inform him of her love for him. This is exactly what happened to Tchaikovsky the other way around, that he received a letter from an admirer expressing undying love for him. And because, simply because he replied, which he shouldn't have done, he felt obliged under the conventions of the day to enter into a marriage with him. And Nutcracker as well, you were asking about, I suppose, which is a, yes. which is a much later work, 18... 90-ish, hmm. last, last three years of his life, last of the three ballets that he wrote. Um, uh, and uh, I, I mean really in, in many ways less, less dramatic than the other two ballets. It's far more of a sort of divertissement, mm. a very thin story around which can be strung a series of numbers of, of, of set dances. But, but in a sense that's what makes it so successful because you have all these set pieces that can be performed out of context. Um, now, it seems at the time uh, Pushkin's famous novel, uh, Eugene Onyegin, was very well known throughout Russia. I wonder whether you feel um, it was a slightly risky of Tchaikovsky to want to set this to uh, music. Well, they are, first of all, they're both genius. And uh, the novel is much more, it has uh, much more, uh, more as aspects, different aspects than the, than the opera. Because uh, the, the opera is... Uh, it has a title, uh, Lyrical Scenes, or something, how do you call it in That's English? Yeah, Lyrical Scenes. Lyrical scenes exactly. yeah. And in, in Russian also. And uh, he took some, some, some actually, not, not all of the things that there are in the novel, mm -hmm. he uh, brought into opera. In fact, that's what uh, makes people like our recent production of Anegin was, it was staged by Dmitry Chernikov, mm -hmm. and uh, not all the people liked it. But I don't know whether you heard about it. I, I've, I've certainly heard that um, the more conservative audience members were uh, a bit right. taken aback by it. Right, right, right. But anyway, uh, th that's what uh, that's what led to Chernikov uh, put some some things in the in his production that maybe wasn't meant by Tchaikovsky, but in some in in a way uh, he took it from a novel. And uh, I, I haven't read the novel. I must mean, how popular is the novel in Russia? Is it a major sort of kids, classic? Ki kids learn it in school. Yeah. So it's, it's I mean, it's a very famous. part of very, yes, yeah. part of basic education. So it's a sort of Dickens yeah. or something right. would be for us. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Can, can I just sort of, I, I think if I'm right, that it's regarded as essentially the first true Russian novel, isn't it? It's sort of, it's earlier than the Dickens. It's regarded as the first novel that brought Russia onto the pages in, in, in that. Maybe, maybe I'm wrong, maybe it is now, but... Uh, well, well, Push Pushkin is meant to be a father of Russian literature. Mm -hmm. Though it's not... I mean, there was a literature before him. Yeah. But he made... Actually, it's, it's, a, it's a great... I mean, we won't... <laughs> every 20 minutes we can, we can do it. 
<laughs> but uh, he, he, he did a few things with the language and with the literature itself that, that may, uh, makes people call him the father of Russian literature. Mm -hmm. But am I right in saying as well that it's, it, it's not so much the storyline of the book that's important as the way in which it is written? It's in, it's in verse, isn't it, I think? Though yeah. the storyline uh, is also, I mean, for us now, maybe it's, again, you can ra rather easily imagine that a girl would write uh, something to a boy today. Mm. But at that time, yeah. and uh, when Pushkin wrote it, it was something... Impossible. Quite a sensation. Yeah. 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 Also, the thing about the um, duel between them, it was also uh, the duels were a great, great problem mm. at that time. I think the novel in Russia, probably in Europe too. Yeah. So, and uh, people thought that it's uh, that's something that, um, I mean, people must not kill each other just because they have some mm. uh, misunderstandings be between. Yeah. <laughs> so what kind of impact have the, the two works, Eugene Onyegin and The Nutcracker, had on, say, uh, Russian composers specifically and on the other types of ballet and opera uh, surrounding that time? Well, I think, I mean, in the ballet world, The, the Nutcracker really does stand alone. It's, it's that kind of... Um, uh, a sequence of dances with a very rough storyline which connects them together is not something that is that has proved popular with ballet since then though many of were mm. more many more were written in that style particularly at the turn of the 20th century but um, which aren't performed now um, I think and I think Eugene Onyegin then again which is this kind of realist story as we talk about you know about very ordinary people young girl in love um, and so on is not something that we normally associate with um, the kind of big world of opera mm. with you know, um, historical settings and uh, uh, aristocracy say, you know, and, 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 and gods and goddesses perhaps mm. and that sort of thing. I think what's unique about Eugene Onyegin is that it is it, it's so domestic in a way it's such a very ordinary story and it really is a very slight story indeed. Mm. Um, but but beautifully presented in with music that that in the way that Tchaikovsky really could really kind of tugs the heartstrings in a certain way you know those those dissonant chords that that are, that display the, the kind of yearning of being in love um, I think you know it's it's a wonderful piece in that respect but I'm not sure it really leads into something else so could you could you describe Eugene Onyegin as the I, the iconic Russian opera. Would any of you? In a way, I would I would say that one of them. If we yeah one of them because if we're talking about iconic Russian operas, that, that's probably it's Havanshina. Yeah, yeah or Boris Godunov. Yeah, mm -hmm. that, probably that's the or Ivan Sosanin. Ivan Sosanin, yeah. of course. Yeah. Or uh, Ruslan Yes. Yes. Incredible. So Anegin mm -hmm. is is great, but it, it's. That, that's what uh, Maestro said. Uh, it didn't really lead to something. <coughs> I mean, it didn't have any. Uh, I mean, those iconic operas, of course, are visually very Russian as well. They, mm -hmm. you know, think of Boris Godunov mm -hmm, with, mm -hmm. with the colours and the robes and the, and the spectacular music and the bells and so on, which are all things we associate with Russia. And you don't have any of that at all in Eugene Onyegin. The, 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 the Russian feeling in there is presented by sort of folk-like tunes, right. I suppose, which is very different to this. And actually, Anegin wasn't, uh, at the time of writing, it wasn't meant to be performed on, uh, on the big stage, because it was written uh, for conservatory Small, theater. for students. Yeah, and uh, after that, uh, Imperial Theatres, Marinsky, I think, they took it uh, for staging. And actually, they added uh, a lot of things. <laughs> I think the, uh, the the, it was Napravnik who was staging it at the Marinsky, and uh, that's why in the in the scores we have uh, a lot of and printed scores we have a lot of things that Napravnik added but Tchaikovsky didn't want them. Right. <laughs> you have to watch out for that. Make sure you've got the right edition before, <laughs> yeah. before you buy. You make you read it.